Hey guys, Scott with Heritage Farms, Texas. Well, it's Friday afternoon, it's after work, and we are up at the farm. So I thought I'd show you this new guy today. This is one of our new bulls. This is what you would call a yearling bull. Uh, he is a registered Angus. He came out of a bull called Milbury, I wanna say Milbury Success 1807. Kind of a strange name for a bull, but anyway, that's what his name is. So uh, pretty elite Angus bull. There was quite a few uh, that sold at the R.A. Brown sale the past week that uh, had this particular uh, pedigree or this dad on a couple of them. And uh, in some prior sales, I've seen him around a little bit. So I bought this guy, Private Treaty, and uh, I'm pretty uh, happy with him. The biggest problem is these two guys are what you call yearling bulls. So over there is the one, the full blood Simmental that we purchased uh, right in the middle of the big Texas winter storm, if you remember. So he's gonna be put in with most of our registered Sim Angus. This guy will also be put in with some registered Sim Angus because even though he's a registered Angus bull, he can be registered under the Simmental Association uh, since we're doing mixed breed uh, Sim Angus cattle. So, the good news, this is the future of Heritage Farms for the next three to five years or until we use them up. The bad news is they're yearling bulls. So yearling bulls on essence can be put in with uh, cows and heifers that are in certain numbers. So the rule of thumb is if a bull is 15 months old, he can probably be put in with 15 head of cows. And uh, But you don't, really don't want to put them in for more than that just because you know, they're still developing. They're getting to a point where they're approaching, you know, two years. They're gonna start losing their teeth. They got a lot of things going for them. So really a tough situation. So my plan is to basically put each one of these guys in with uh, 15 head and uh, we'll see what happens. So that takes uh, 30 head between the two of them. And what's ironic, a full mature, you know, three, four, five-year-old bull can probably handle uh, 30 to 35 cows if he's in prime breeding season. So these guys are kind of what I would call part-timers, but hey, they're developing and it's important to kind of lead them along and see where they go. So uh, pretty excited, glad to have them. You know, it's kind of peace of mind to have them, but there's a lot of work that goes into developing young bulls. It would be great if I could just show up and buy, you know, some two-year-old bulls ready to go to work. But the reality is the cost goes up substantially because somebody's got to develop those bulls to two years of age. They got to feed them. They got to have a place to keep them around. Let's face it, bulls too. Spring is in the air and they uh, sense that cows are in heat. They want to get out. So your pens have to be great. Your pastures have to be great. Your management of keeping the bulls away from the cows has to be super because let me tell you, if they think they can get out, they will get out. And uh, so there's a lot that goes into it. So, the, you know, the question is, do you spend a lot of money and uh, buy them two years old, ready to go and let somebody else develop them? Or do you spend a moderate amount of money, get them young, and then you develop them and get them into your program? And uh, right now, given my budget and everything, this is what worked for me. So uh, that's kind of the plan today and this weekend. I've got to figure out where to put these guys because right now they're in here, but uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just not the best setup. I've really got to work this year. This is probably my number one priority for 2021 is to build out what I'm gonna call some bull traps where we can keep bulls separated and feed them and don't have to worry about uh, you know fighting or one getting injured or everything because what got me in this position is I had another yearling bull that we purchased last year that completed his first year of breeding. Uh, he was in a pasture all by himself with some cows. Our big herd bull got out, got into the pasture with the little bull and everything was great. They got along for a while, but the little bull became bigger and bigger and bigger. And one day it finally came to a fight and the big bull just absolutely crushed the little guy. And I'm pretty sure his hip is broken and we're gonna have to sell him off. So uh, the other pasture right now, I have uh, in essence a three-legged bull. That's gotta go to the cell barn because there's just no way he's gonna recover in time for breeding season. And uh, really unfortunate, but you know, it's just part of that learning curve. And that's kind of where we're at. We're at a crossroads with this little operation because really 
two bulls don't cut it. Three is barely enough, and really, honestly, I need four, or I need to move to the next step, which is go to artificial insemination, and then use these young yearling bulls for cleanup, which is probably what we'll do next year, but as a part-time guy, nothing is easy, man. You just take what you can get, and you work around the uh, challenges, so that's what we're dealing with. Uh, so if you were looking at uh, Heritage Farms Texas as a sports team, we would be very young. We are not a team of veterans on the uh, bull side, but uh, hey, hopefully uh, vigor comes with uh, being young, enthusiasm, and hopefully these guys can take care of uh, their assignment, which is coming up here uh, towards the end of April, 1st of May. Hey, more to follow. Hope you guys have a great day. Leave me a comment, thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. Love to hear from you. Hey guys. Scott with Heritage Farms, Texas. Saturday. Saturday morning, what's on deck? Well, we got those two bulls up there at the corral. I really need to get them over here in what we call the bull pen. We've been letting this group of 11 heifers stay over here. And uh, these are my spring heifers from uh, last year. So basically these guys are just basically uh, 13 months old, most of them. and. Uh, they need to go back over to the other pasture and the bulls need to come over here. So we use this little makeshift pen here with these little dills. We come in, we put the feed trough in here. And with these flexible panels, we can spread them out, get them in, but there's always one or two that won't come in. So there we are. We have these two, which just won't come in. And uh, so we're gonna get the uh, nine that we have and then we will go from there. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Here comes the CEO, CFO, my beautiful, lovely wife. And uh, she's bringing some essentials, I'm pretty sure. Ice, drinks, cold beverages. Wave at the camera, honey. Hey. All right, more to follow, but we're moving these. Okay, well, it's Sunday and uh, mission accomplished. We finally got the heifers in the right spot. So what you're looking at down here is uh, basically with the exception of two three-year-old cows, you basically have some two-year-old cows and some yearlings. You can see they're fighting to see who's going to have dominance and who's going to be the uh, king of the uh, pasture, if you will. No shocker that this white one has very opinionated. So she's going to try to be the mother hen, I'm sure. But anyway. This is what we got. We got to get one out of there that's a, a cull cow that I've just got in there as a placeholder. But for the most part, everything you see in this little grouping is less than three years old. And uh, all right, we got the bulls over to the bull pen and uh, a little bit of progress, but it was fighting us all the way today. It's been raining. It's not really cold, it's cool, but uh, hey, we'll take it. It should make the ryegrass pop. Temperatures are gonna be in the 75 to 80 degree range this week. So a little moisture on the ground, a little sunshine, uh, grass should grow. So, hey, glory be to God, hit the thumbs up, leave us a comment. So just wanted to give you a snapshot of uh, some of the stuff going on with cattle this weekend. Thanks.